All right, all right. Welcome back to this YouTube channel. My name is Salvador Brigman. On this channel, we talk about crowdfunding. And in this video, this video tutorial, I'm gonna be walking you through how to set up a Kickstarter campaign from start to finish. What do you gotta do if you wanna get this sucker out there fast? Some advice and tips along the way, just some ways to improve it, some of the best practices, hopefully to help you. So that way you can get your project out there to improve the world, to impact the world in a positive way, whether that's a physical product, that's a film campaign you're running, that could be a game, um, racing money from music, publishing, comic books, whatever it is, we'll be talking about that in today's video and it's coming up right after this. Right. Again, my name is Salvador Brigman. Let's get right to it. You can grab a cup of coffee and a notebook and you can follow along as we are setting up a Kickstarter campaign from start to finish. So when it comes to Kickstarter, there are many different types of projects and creators here which are successfully raising money every single week. I made it my mission in 2012 to really document this process for the world. The way I've been doing that is through my podcast where I bring on real world entrepreneurs every single week. Also through my content, my videos, my blog, crowdcrux.com and really try to helping people by putting out quality education and also working with coaching students and selectively with clients, helping them with their projects. So you can come here and you can look at some of the different projects which are live, which I think is a great exercise and something that actually not a lot of my students will actually do is looking at other campaigns, getting a sense of how they do their videos, their copy, how much they're raising money, etc. I think it's a really great exercise. So if you want to jump into actually creating a campaign, all you got to do is when you come here, log in or create your account and come here and click new. And that's going to create a new campaign. It's going to open up this particular website site right here, this web page. So the first start of creating a Kickstarter campaign is deciding the category in which you want to launch him. And personally, I actually think this is a little bit confusing because there are so many different types of categories that are out there. So if you're coming to this and you're like, I don't know which one my mine fits in, right? You can obviously change this and you can edit this as you go. But I do think it's very important to be aware you got to fit into a category in order to launch on Kickstarter. So I would say in terms of the people that I'm typically working with, um, the common ones tend to be comics. We get a lot of comic campaigns. We got film and video campaigns. We got a lot of people doing new fashion products or fashion items. Design products are a mega a category. We're helping a lot of people with design product would be things, for example, like a product design or something that's new. You're coming out with a new product or invention of some kind. There are also games. There's journalism, photography, technology is another massive category. I've worked with a lot of different technology campaigns in the past. You can also go into the archives of my show and you can hear from people. So first of all, you'd select which category you are launching in and then you would select the subcategory. So this is going to be important because it's going to determine when you start to actually launch your campaign and get funding, it's really going to determine whether or not you actually rank in your category and in your subcategory. So for example, the product category, product design category is different than a technology category. The types of projects you'll be going up with are different as well. So you want to select one that's reflective of you. So for example, maybe you're doing a technology product for an app or you're doing something more in the web space or a gadget or whatever it is. You're going to come here and you're going to select the major category and then this other subcategory. So this is another subcategory. This is just to provide more relevancy. This is so that they can help more people discover your project. You would select the second um, subcategory if you wanted to. If you want to select one more subcategory, it'll help you provide more relevant results. And that way you can get more people discovering your project. Once you do that, you are then going to move into the second step of setting up the project, which is the location. This is kind of something that's really important because depending on where you are launching from, you may or may not be eligible for doing a Kickstarter campaign. So you want to come here and look at the actual platform um, where you can launch this in terms of the different regions and also some of the specifications. So for example, you got to be over 18 years old. You got to be, if you're raising funds as, as an individual, you have to reside in the country where you're launching it. If you're doing an entity, you have to have that entity registered in that particular country. You need a bank account, etc. You should just come here and read through this. There's some different documentation there and you can learn more about the categories and I'm uh, sorry about the categories and also the locations where you can run a project. I am currently, my friends, living in the United States. I do love to travel around. I do admire entrepreneurs from many different countries. For example, in Australia, tons of entrepreneurs as well in Europe, in Canada, in Asia, I have so many people I've worked with uh, when it comes to Hong Kong, like different countries, even in South Africa. So there, there are so many entrepreneurs around the world. Select the country which you then uh, are representative of. So you would click this and then you would click continue. 
Okay. Um, now there is one thing I would say there, which is that when you're selecting, you know, the, the place you're running the campaign from, you could, like I said, you could set up a business entity in the United States and you can run the campaign there, or you could run it from your own home country. A common question I get is, does it matter, Sal? Good question. You should look at some other projects. Typically it does not matter unless there's a critical reason behind it, whether that's brand building or that's something related to your management team, or even just a little bit of credibility, but it's not super difficult as well to set up a business in the United States. And I got a whole video out there showing you how to do that. So once you, you hit the next button, you're going to come up with this next project page. So this is really when we begin to get into the nuts and bolts of building your Kickstarter campaign. So a couple of really quick rules here. I do think that this is critical and I think it's kind of boring. Like, ah, I don't, I hate rules, man. You know, that was one of the most boring things when you're going through a lecture or something like that in school, right? Learning about things you're never going to use, like, I don't know, geometry, right? Or something like that. This is at least going to be useful for you because that way, you know if you can actually cash out. I've had clients I've worked with who unfortunately don't always follow the rules and sometimes they get a notice from Kickstarter and they've raised like 100K plus and Kickstarter's like, you know what? We might actually have to shut you down. You know, then I have to get in there. We have to make sure that we need you to know, send an email and everything's, you know, put right. And hopefully then they're abiding by those rules and stuff like that. So be aware of these um, just in case you are successful. It makes it so that way you have a strong foundation. The more preparation you can do in general, I think the better of launching one of these campaigns. Number one, projects must create something to be shared with others. So you got to actually create a product. You got to have an end pr product of some kind. If that's an app, you need to, you know, create an app. If you are doing a film, you got to obviously create the film. If you're doing a physical product, you got to create that physical product. You can't raise money for charity. You can't just take this funds, deposit it into your bank account and come and visit me here in like Miami, Florida and just sip margaritas on the beach. You cannot do that, my friends. You got to actually deliver something. You also have to be clear and honest in how you present something. So sometimes that might mean you need to um, provide more information for for example, that's happened one or two times uh, where you have to provide information about the technology behind the product to show people this revolutionary new thing you're making actually can exist in the world, right? Or provide just some more specs or something like that. You got to be honest. You got to be clear. Again, you can't raise money for charity. You can't offer equity. You can offer equity on another platform called WeFunder, wefunder.com, Start Engine, Republic. I have a whole book I wrote on equity crowdfunding explained uh, and also a free course on that, which you can check out in my YouTube videos. If you want to raise money as a startup company, you want to raise investment capital, you can do that using crowdfunding, but you got to watch some of my other videos, not this video. But I do appreciate you, man. Thank you for your time. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Finally, you got to make sure you do not offer any of these prohibited items. And if you want to, we can also have you read more about these rules. Prohibited items are the number one sticking point that I would say uh, when it comes to a lot of my viewers, a lot of the readers, when it comes to my blog that write in, we're getting like tons of emails literally every single week from y'all. And it's great. It's incredible. I feel so honored to be a member of the crowdfunding space, but you want to look through some of these prohibited items and rules. And I'll, I'll let this load here so you guys can see this in a second. Uh, recording my screen here. Here is slowing this up a little bit. So if we come here, let's go to prohibited rules. So a couple of things to be aware of. Um, you can't say, I'm going to cure COVID. I'm going to treat this or that. I'm going to you know, cure everyone from unhappiness or something like that. You can't really make these really big claims of like curing or preventing an illness or a condition. Even if you have a book, I have, I've worked with a lot of authors. You can't like have a book that says like, we are going to cure the world from this, right? You have to be more specific with your wording in terms of the results, which your product is going to have. You can't do raffles. You can do a referral program using different tools. If you're interested in learning more about some of those tools, you can always book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me. We can talk more about some of the technology you can use to soup up your campaign. Uh, you can't do contest coupons. We mentioned that one. So energy, food, and drinks, offensive material. I think that's kind of obvious. Genetically modified organisms. That's always funny when I see that. Uh, but yeah, you can't do one of those, unfortunately. I would think like a plant or something maybe you might offer like that. I don't know if you're going to offer like a, a weird buff worm or something like this. I don't understand that one. So so much. Uh, you can't do live animals, offering alcohol as well. This is a big one is you can't do financial incentives. So um, this would be like, you know, credit card services or something like that. You know, you can't do that. And there's some other ones that are say here, you can read through all of these in order to learn more about this. Can't do political fundraising, unfortunately on Kickstarter. So it would have to do, if you're doing a political campaign, like in nature, the way I usually would get around that would do like a book, for example, but you're not just raising money for a political party and donating it to the party. You're raising money for like a project of some 
kind that maybe has a political slant to it, right? You can't do other things, obviously, as well. You know, discrimination, drugs, resale. There are two ones I really want to mention. The first one is that you can't resell products. So what does that mean? That means you can't just buy a bunch of inventory of a product, claim that you made it, put on a label and sell it. Those are for the people that are not creative, that are not ingenuity, don't have ingenuity that, you know, aren't really trying to change the world with something new. They're just trying to make some money here and there. They're just trying to extract value from people, right? They're just trying to resell something. And I honestly have no problem with it. Like you go to any kind of convenience store and people are reselling things as a retailer, right? I don't really mind that. But if you're trying to pawn something off and say like, I made this when you didn't actually, that's something that is 100% not allowed on the platform. And unfortunately, um, if that was something that you were intending on doing, uh, you need to show the prototype, show that it works, don't have misleading imagery. You have to actually create something in order to raise money for it on Kickstarter. So if you're doing a resale, you got to add something to it. You got to, you know, improve it in some way. If you already have a product you've made, repackage it in some way. You really need to like make it much better. Okay. You don't want it just to be like something that already exists that you're then selling. Okay. So we come here, we're going to start to get into some of these different items here. So I would actually say that the most important items when it comes to this is really thinking through your project page. And you know, the rewards are also important, but typically when someone's first coming to thinking about a Kickstarter, that can be having a lot of different question marks when it comes to the rewards. So for example, you might be questioning about like shipping costs, logistics, what am I going to price it? You might not have all of that information right now when you're trying to set up this Kickstarter campaign, but it will help you have a much clearer idea of what you are going to need. In addition, you are going to need a bank account where you can then link that and you can get payment verification. Once we submit all of these, we would then go into the project review, which takes one to three business days and they must approve it for you to then go live on Kickstarter. Once that does happen, you will then get a link which you can share with other people and people can actually follow your project on Kickstarter and they will get a notification when you go live. So let's start off the bat here with the basics. So one of the things that I do like about Kickstarter is it's a little bit easier to navigate and go through these. So if you are getting lost at any point in time, you can always go back to the original screen and you can look at that. In terms of the title and the subtitle, I would recommend thinking about what keywords you want to include in your title and something that's easy for people to type in. More often than not, if I am doing a podcast with someone and they're talking about their Kickstarter campaign, it needs to be something that's easy. People can easily search up on Kickstarter. So think a little bit, one, about the keywords, making it simple and easy for someone to type. In addition, you want to promise something with your title. So people should look at the title and be very clearly aware of what it is you're going to be delivering. Is it a new AI assistant of some some kind? Is it the best, uh, I don't know, scrubbing brush that you've ever seen, right? With your, in the kitchen or something like that. Be clear about what makes it unique. It will then capture attention. The subtitle is going to expand on this title. It's going to add more features, functionality, benefits, kind of tease what it is that your, your product or your project does. Or in the case of something more creative, like a film, it's probably going to talk about the genre. It's going to tease the story, maybe even some of the things that are at stake with that story, right? So every category is different. And this is really one of the reasons why so many people will end up booking an individual coaching call with me because every single category is unique on Kickstarter. I wrote about this in my thesis, which I did as an undergraduate at George Washington University as a mini econ thesis, doing a logistic regression, comparing the different categories on Kickstarter. And the, my thesis was that the best practices which apply to Kickstarter aren't true for every category. And I turned out to be right. Some categories, for example, your social network matters more than others. Sometimes your marketing is going to be dramatically different for a game versus for a physical product or for a music project. So that was kind of my thesis. And that's what really led to a lot of my work in this industry. Anyway, to come to this, you're going to select your project category, primary category, as you can see here, and also your subcategory. You're going to go into your location, a project image. This is kind of just your thumbnail. If you are working with a designer, then you would give them these uh, specifications when it comes to the pixels and the cropped ratio. I do recommend, if possible, thinking about assembling a team for your launch. So many people will be like, you know, Sal, I want to launch this campaign in one week. I guarantee you, you can assemble, a, you know, bare bones of a campaign within a week. I really do think you can, if you are focused on it, if you're really persistent, if you're tenacious, if you're hardworking, you know, some of the things that I talk about in terms of my company values, being willing to show up, push through those difficult emotions, get things done, be disciplined about it, but it might not be the best campaign. You got to revise, you got to improve it. I would say more likely would be 
around a month. If you go between one to three months, that then gives you more time as well to do things like a pre-launch, to build an audience before you go live, <clears throat> etc. But that being said, one of the things that you want to think about is I would create a KPI campaign. So I would look at, we call this a KPI campaign. And I do this every single time I'm working either with a student or with a client. We will look at some other campaigns. We'll take one that we like, and we'll just really begin to look at what is trending right now on Kickstarter. What do the profile photos look like? Which ones are capturing our attention? How are they doing, right? So some of them, for example, like this one have text, which is an upcycled fish scales, plastic bottles, shoe, obviously, because you can see, you know, the feet here in the image. Other ones have more of a graphical kind of feel when it comes to this, you know, book, which is being put together or just a, a very simple keyboard. So thinking about, do you want to include words on your image? What is the background, which you maybe want to have? Do you want to have the product in there or do you want to give people an idea in a different way? Go and look at some other campaigns. That's really going to help when it comes to having the thumbnail. The biggest mistake with the thumbnail typically is adding too much, too busy, too much going on and people don't know how to direct their attention. And then you start to get to the video. So this is why I say it's very difficult to launch a campaign within one week. I would say that uh, in my entire history, I've never had someone do it successfully unless they don't do a video. And that's okay. You can actually launch a campaign without a video. This is a huge like misnomer where people are like, Sal, this is not what you said in other videos, right? I would say a best practice always is to have a video. However, there are certain categories, again, on Kickstarter where you don't necessarily need a video. Video. There are examples. If you look into my podcast of people who have raised six figures in the novel category, right, in the publishing category with comics that don't have a video necessarily. However, it is best practice to have one because it's going to be way more emotionally impactful. So when you're doing a video, that's probably going to be a video that's between, you know, around three, maybe three and a half minutes. There's some videos nowadays are around one minute or to one to one minute and a half. If it's a very technology uh, kind of design product, or it might be between two to three. When you're getting into more of like the five minute videos or that, oh my gosh, the eight minute video. That is something that is definitely not good because it's boring. It's long. It's hard to have high production value at that kind of length. <clears throat> so you really want to think about the video and the video will take you some time as well. You'll probably need a storyboard. You'll need a shot list. You'll need to decide when you're going to film it. You're going to decide who's going to be in it, right? It's a lot that comes to the video. Then you're going to go through your funding goal. Okay. So the funding goal, I talk about this a lot in my book, actually the Kickstarter launch formula. This is a book that I wrote I put together the entire paint by numbers formula of how to launch one of these suckers and not only raise your funding goal, but below passion, smash through your goals, both when it comes to Kickstarter and your life, what you're trying to do here, right? So the funding goal is what absolute minimum you should need in order to execute on this project. And I will tell you a little bit of a secret as well. If you look at some of these other campaigns that are quickly funded, you'll notice a lot of them have very low funding goals. And the reason is that people want to set a low goal so they can raise more. Look at this. These guys raise 7,000% over their funding goal. And you know what? It's exciting to be a part of a campaign that is overly funded. It's almost like just a really cool event, which is happening. So that being said, when it comes to your funding goal, set the lowest amount um, that you think you need in order to actually move forward with the project. And there is some strategy that goes behind this as well uh, that goes beyond this particular video. Also, if you want to, you can look into this calculator. Um, this is something that to me, I don't use this when I'm actually putting together a project. Instead, I would rather use Excel or Google sheets, I think that it's going to be much more accurate and also much more comprehensive. And there's different what things as well um, when, when actually putting this together. So for example, if you want to have an estimated budget, you can put you can put that in here and you could say what's going to go to taxes, right? The percentage here, Kickstarter fees, Kickstarter processing. So this is a very like basic bare bones calculator. I don't think it's uh, something that I would recommend necessarily. I do think it's useful to give you a high level view. For example, the credit card processing, the payment processing fees, things you need to think about right? It's good as a place to start. However, um, I do think they actually have a little bit more, more information. And I'm honestly not as, I'm not as impressed, you know, when it comes to their ways to, to estimate that kind of stuff. But Kickstarter is a great platform, of course. Then you would do your target launch date. This is something which is optional. I would recommend, again, giving yourself between one to three months to launch a Kickstarter campaign. It's going to make it so it's not super aggressive where you're really trying to just throw a campaign together in a haphazard fashion, uh, fashion and not get something that's really good on the flip side, it gives you enough time when it comes to the pre-launch to build up an audience, a wait list, do the things that I talk about in my book, the Kickstarter launch formula, which is available on Audible and Amazon. And that way you can launch with a bang. You can get funding immediately. You can come on my show and be like, Sal, you were
were right about all of these things. And also then you can share your creation with the world when you are overfunded and your campaign is successful. Okay, so campaign duration here, we have uh, a fixed number of days or you could end on a specific date and time. Personally, I don't understand why they have this option. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I guess unless you, your brain thinks that way, to me it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> but Okay, so number of days, I would say uh, an average is going to be 30 days. If you know what you're doing, if you want to have maximum urgency, you should be setting uh, you know, a lower uh, funding duration. So if you really are like a professional, for example, you might even do like a 20-day campaign. Or I've had people who do a seven-day campaign. And then I have a lot of my audience that's like, Sal, why would you even want to put any kind of duration on this? The reason kind of goes back to the whole thing that I'm passionate about and why I talk about these, these videos publicly. I'm passionate about marketing. I like getting people to take action. I like pe getting people to you know do cool new stuff, to share new products with the world. Uh, one of my vision statements with my company is to help the world when it comes to helping people reach their potential. And by doing that, getting new stuff out there and getting people to try it out. So um, in order to do that, you need to set a certain and funding duration that causes people to say, you know what, this is only going to be available for a certain amount of time. Heck, if this was open all the time, I'm never going to get around to it. You know, in the same way, if you're writing a paper, right, or something like that, I would love to say that when I wrote papers in college that I planned weeks in advance and I wrote a little bit every single week. Ironically, that's more of what I do now with writing books. But like back in the day, I was just like waiting until the last possible day to stay up all night and to write like a six hour, you know, paper, six page or 12 page or, you know, whatever it is paper, right? People act when there's urgency. So having a fixed duration will allow people to act because there's a feeling of urgency. This campaign is going to end. There's the fear of missing out. So 45 days, I would say gives you a little bit more time in terms of your marketing. If you're doing PR, influencer marketing, the stuff I talk about in some of my courses as a powerful way to drive traffic and get credibility, you could do 45 days. Um, it will be more difficult to maintain momentum. 60 days is usually not recommended. The exception would be if you have a big existing audience, if you have a plan, if you have a campaign manager, if you have a marketing budget to run ads throughout the campaign, then I'm usually thinking more so in the line of doing a 60 day campaign. Let's talk about the, the story here and then we'll get more into the rewards. Now, at this point in the video, you might be like, oh my gosh, Sal, this is so much information and the way that you talk about this in such a fast way. Can you please slow down? Can you please let me take notes, right? Well, one of the things that I realized very quickly is that this is a lot of information. It's like trying to compress the things I've learned over the last decade, you know, since 2012 into a simple video. It's so difficult. So what I did was I put together this free course for you. And this is kind of much more bite-sized where I'm sending you a video every single week, some training every single week, helping you, you know, holding your hand as you're going through and you're launching or you're creating this Kickstarter campaign. This course also applies to Indiegogo and it is 100% completely free. So if you want to get access to the best tactics, techniques, what you got to do in terms of the best practices, get this sucker set up. Some of my great videos on that. Go and check this out at crowdcrux.com slash Kickstarter. That link will take you there, crowdcrux.com slash Kickstarter. And I will include that link as well in the description. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrate is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from FulfillRight today. Link in the description. Now we get to this uh, portion in the video where we're really going more into the story. So when it comes to the story, the story is really what people are going to see after they watch your video. The biggest mistake that typically happens here is that people will just list a couple of bullet points or just some writing. And they just think like it's kind of like, an, you know, basically like just to add a little bit onto the video. What you want to think of is this is like a massive expansion on the video. So you have some photos, some graphics, some other gifts. You want to include all of that in this particular story. And I actually wouldn't even recommend, and again, I know I have like a love-hate relationship with Kickstarter. It's like that person you've been married to for so many years, got that love-hate relationship, right? So for example, if you're saying something like the founding team, right? Or we're doing other things here, for example, like major benefits, you know, I probably would think a little bit more about something more sizzly. So if I gave an example, for example, um, you created a new travel bag, so it's modular and portable, right? One way of doing this is like writing this down, right? And like having a headline here and being like, it's modular and portable. A better way is to actually use a tool 
like Canva or, or even hiring someone, an agency or hiring someone to help you out to actually create a headline that's graphical in nature and that looks really cool and it's in line with your brand style and it makes it pop off the page. In addition, when you go to other Kickstarter campaigns, if we come back here, you're gonna notice a lot of graphical images, a lot of multimedia, a lot of things, again, that I say, pop off the page. And the way that they're doing that is not by using the actual Kickstarter editor. So this is a little bit of an insider tip, you guys. This is an insider tip. So if you like the kind of tips that I'm sharing here, again, give me a thumbs up on this video. So while this loads here, uh, we come here, there's a lot of text. As you can see, these guys have created or have backed 33 other campaigns. Starts to load here. You can see here this image, right? Or this one here. These are all images. The more that you can use these types of images, the more this campaign is going to pop off the page. It's gonna seem like they're buying a product and they're actually getting something that actually exists in the world. So if we come back here to this, you're going to use images, videos, GIFs, and copy in order to sell that steak. It's like the sizzle. You're having a beautiful, almost like a brochure or a sales page or a web page, which you're going to formulate here. That's gonna take you some time to put together. Typically, you know, when I'm doing it, I'm working off of a system to, to get it together. So maybe it would take like a week, but um, it might take you a little bit longer depending on your ability to pull together all those resources. I would say it's good to get started here with text from a first draft standpoint, write out those things, you know, go through that and really think about what you want to communicate. And you also need risks and challenges. This is obviously so you don't get sued, but also it's just to give people an idea if they do back this, what are some of the challenges which might come up when it comes to your manufacturer, when it comes to getting maybe a certain design or something that's uncertain with the project, being a little bit aware there. So once you're beginning, you're, you're at this point, you might want to get feedback potentially on your campaign before you're going live. So there are a lot of places where you can do that. And I have some videos on that. But uh, one of my resources is this, kickstarterforum.org. I started this forum back in 2013. It's in no way affiliated with Kickstarter, but it's just a place where people can ask questions. They can post things. They can see what people think. We do have a rule that you need to comment on a couple of different campaigns before you announce your own. But this is something that you can actually do if you are interested. You can sign up on kickstarterforum.org. In addition, I have a great free Facebook group that is out there. So um, we get a ton of people trying to join this like every single day and people who are interested in being a part of this. Uh, there is a screening mechanism so that we can kind of screen out bots and people that are just, you know, trying to, I don't know, you know, spam different links that aren't relevant. But we do at the moment, I'm recording this, have around 12,000 members in this group. If you want to check it out, just go to crowdcrux.com slash Facebook group. That link will take you to my private Facebook group. You can see my beautiful mug right there. Some of the books that I've written and my podcast as well. Probably got to update that at some point in time uh, when it comes to that. But that, that's really where we, uh, if you want to share your page and get some feedback, you can also do that here. So that brings me next to the rewards section. So we kind of tabled that for now. Um, at this point in time, you should basically have the skeleton of your campaign. You should be having the campaign page come together. You're much more aware of that, much more clear of that. And you're like, you know what? Okay, I can now begin to think about what would I charge people? And that's also going to help you understand more of your funding goal. So when it comes to rewards, right? Rewards, the big daddy in the room. Why is it that people back campaigns is so they can get these really cool perks and rewards. So there are a couple different sections here. The first are the reward tiers is also known as perks, rewards or perks. So with rewards, these are the core rewards, which someone can gain access to when they back your campaign. And I'll go through that in just a second. We also have add-ons. I think of add-ons as an upsell. So for example, let's just say that we came out with a cool modular bag. And one of the add-ons was like a really great water bottle that fits into that bag, or maybe something that can be attached to that bag to improve the functionality in some way. An add-on is kind of like an upsell, or maybe even like an outdoor, I don't know, blanket or something that dries very quickly, or that in some way keeps you insulated from, I don't know, rainfall, right? You can have an add-on here, 
and then you have items. So items are basically the different elements of the overall reward. So it's a little bit confusing. So let me try to demystify that one for you uh, using my hallmark term. So let's just say you got that modular bag, right? So one item would be the bag, but maybe when they actually back at that reward tier, there are also other items which you are including in that particular package. So they're getting like a carabiner. They're getting some other stuff that's related to that bag. There are different items that make up that one reward tier. That's where you can list them and then it will show up on your Kickstarter campaign uh, when they are looking at this. So to come here, first of all, you would come here and you would look at how do I want to title this particular reward? I would definitely think about this in a copywriting standpoint. Um, how can I make this an interesting title? How can I make this something that uh, is going to pop off the page and give people an idea of value? Then you pick out your amount. And there's a whole psychology behind pricing. There's a whole psychology behind creating these reward packages. But I would say the average amount that's typically pledged on a Kickstarter campaign is around 50 bucks. Uh, so there's a tiered kind of creation of the rewards where it's almost like a waterfall effect where certain ones might sell out, which we'll talk about in a bit, but there's sort of a tiered effect. So I'm going to say for here, uh, reward one, just because it's hard to, to think and brainstorm while I'm also making this video for y'all. Um, we'll just have an amount here. This is be like a $25 level here. You see for $25 or more and you get this. You would then have an image, which would then show up here once you uploaded it and you have the specs for that image and then description. This says that it's optional, but actually I think this is, this is like mandatory. Um, you should have a description. The description should talk about what is the percentage off of manufactured suggested retail price, also known as MSRP. This is basically the retail price. So this look kind of makes people feel or gives that idea of if they back it now, they're actually getting a better deal than when you come out with this on your Shopify store or you come out with this um, via retail outlets, right? Eventually, you want to give people an idea of the deal which they're going to get. Um, so you would have some copy here and you'd also maybe list what this includes. You could have some bullets if you want to, right? There's, there's a lot of things you can do here. And again, you would have items which are included in this particular reward. So one item might be, like I said, the backpack. And you might also have the image of that as well. I would recommend uploading that, even though it says it's optional. That way, um, people feel like they're getting something real when they actually back this. Then we have to decide what the shipping is going to be. So this is, again, when a lot of people get very confused because they don't know what to put for shipping. So they usually table this issue. There's two ways you can go about this, and I have other videos out there on shipping. I'm not going to cover it too much in this video, but suffice it to say, uh, the international shipping, a lot of people in Kickstarter are in the U.S. But if you, you um, skip on international shipping, you will miss out on a significant portion when it comes to that. And you can select different prices depending on where people are. Okay. So a lot of, a lot of cool stuff there. If you want to, you can use a fulfillment company as well to ship out those rewards. You then would have your estimated delivery time. So as you can see, this is a lot of information. My preferred method for putting this together is not within the Kickstarter dashboard. It's actually to think it out ahead of time. This is how I like to do work. I like to do work in stages in the same way of like you're painting a picture. It comes together in layers. You first start with the canvas and you get that ready and you put layer after layer of paint and then you have a beautiful piece of artwork, right? Same thing if you're building a house. You start with the foundation maybe, right? Or you even start with clearing the, the road of different, you know, debris and stuff so your truck can pull in and you clear out that area in the field of all the debris mm -hmm. and then you start with the foundation or whatever it is, right? And then you kind of have layer over layer and you put together the stilts and then eventually put into the plumbing and the electric and you get, you can go from there. It happens in stages. Same thing with this. I prefer uh, assembling this in a different application and in a different manner. And then I will port that into the actual Kickstarter campaign here. Otherwise, I find it very difficult to um, you know, maintain where I am in place and making sure that everything is accurate. Okay, the other two things I want to point out here while we're on this page are you can have what are called limited quantity rewards where there's only maybe 100 of these available. Or if you wanted to, you could specify a start and an end date for like a sale of some kind. So for example, Black Friday. Maybe you're doing a Black Friday sale where this reward is only going to be available for two days or something like that. Wait, I know they say Black Friday, but really they mean like the weekend, right? So you could do you could do a time limit reward if you wanted to and you could also have certain add-ons right they people choose if they wanted to to their pledge so th this would be you know you could save this reward and you can go through that and it's kind of the basic you know fundamentals 
behind that actual um, information. I don't know if it's going to allow me to save it because I don't think we completed everything here. Okay, it did. Awesome. Next, if we wanted to, we can go into add-ons. So if we click add-ons here, um, you go through the title, the amount, the images, the description, the item, the contents, the shipping. It's basically all of the same stuff, and you can have that add-on there. Uh, and that way, people can add something onto our particular order. And in addition, you see here their item. If you needed to, you could always edit that item. You could have the image, et cetera. So the building of the rewards is a phase that you go through with the Kickstarter campaign. This is, again, why I say it's kind of hard to execute a campaign within just like a week, right? You can do it certainly within one to three months. You could do it very well if you had even more time, like three to six months. But it's something that happens in phases, okay? So I would, again, recommend uh, writing this out outside of the Kickstarter <clears throat> application, and then you can begin to port that into Kickstarter when you are ready at that point in time. So we're going to be going through a couple of these uh, different sections here. And it's pretty insane, you know, that we're getting to this point. We've made so much progress in such a small amount of time. And I commend you so much for being willing to show up, for being willing to invest in your education, for putting yourself first, for actually believing that maybe if this is your first time, you can actually do this. You can raise money. You can get a new product out there into the world. So for me, you know, I always found it hard to show other people that this is possible. This is something that you can do. And it's one of the reasons why I started my podcast is that people would not believe, hey, this guy just raised six figures. This guy I was talking about just raised seven figures on Kickstarter. And there's a path behind that. There's a paint by numbers formula behind that. There's a system behind that. And I've dedicated my time to sharing and teaching that to you so that you can be successful, so that you can actually get something out there into the world, so that we can raise your potential. And in that way, you're able to do something that you didn't think you were even capable of doing or having us help you when it comes to the execution of that. So when it comes to doing this, um, you next get to the people section. And the reason why I'm kind of talking about this is that you can have different collaborators on your campaign. I would say this is extremely common with the Kickstarter campaign is to work with other people, to work with teammates. So if you're working with other people, you can add them here in the collaborated section. Uh, if you wanted to, you can add some more information when it comes to demographics. You can customize your vanity URL. You can add your profile image. Um, if this is something you're interested in learning more about, whether that's you know getting one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, having me have a trained eye assess your campaign, going into your strategy, going into maybe some of the elements of this process, which are not super clear for you, you can book an individual one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me, and I will become your collaborator. You can do that at the link down below, or if you go to crowdcrux.com slash coaching, you can sign up there. You can tell me more information about you, your project, what you're trying to raise money for, and I can help hold your hand as you're going out there, you're executing or help you in different ways, introduce you to other people in the industry, to resources you don't even know about when it comes to doing one of these campaigns. So just go to crowdcrux.com slash coaching, and you can book that individual one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me. Okay, so the last section I want to go through here, and then we'll do a, a quick kind of summing up overview of what you should be focused on and how to do these in a systematic fashion. Okay, so you will have, uh, when you come here, your email, your project type, um, how you'll be raising funds. Is this an individual, a business, or a nonprofit? You're going to go through a verification, a project verification, so that way you can have um, your bank account as well also locked and uh, you know synced up with this, a payment source. There's a lot of, uh, you know, very simple things you need to do here just to make sure that you're dotting your I's and you're crossing your T's. And then you're going to get more into the promotion mode, which is having a project URL, potentially a pre-launch page where you can share this and people can follow your project as well as other things like Google Analytics, Metapixels. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do here if you are interested in involving digital marketing as a part of your launch strategy. For someone who's looking to do a big campaign, like you want to raise, I'd say 75 to maybe 250K, you know, even more than that, 300K, 500K, you should be thinking about digital marketing. Even if you are a beginner and you're only trying to raise 20K, 10K, you know, 30K, you should still have a digital marketing strategy. However, when it comes to these bigger numbers, it matters even more so, and as well, tracking it using some of these different tools and technology. So let's come back here. In order, in terms of a broad overview, 
you've learned some of the basics of how to set up the campaign, what you need, what you got to get. You should have a task list kind of running in your mind right now. You also know some of the best practices when it comes to your story, your reward, right? How you actually put together some of these packages from a technical standpoint, the functionality behind it. And if nothing else, at this point in time, if you feel a little bit more confident, if you feel like this isn't so scary, I did my job because that's really what this video is designed to do. You're not going to be able to learn all of this in one simple YouTube video. You maybe are going to have to rewatch it or rewatch sections of it or even go and look at some other supplementary information. For example, that free course I mentioned or you know, go and learn more about this in my book or some of my other YouTube videos. This is a process uh, and similar to, like I said, building a house, it happens in a step-by-step -step fashion. However, there's a science to it. It's not just all art and design and having an intuitive sense of things. That is part of it when it comes to coming out with a new campaign or a new product. However, there is also a science which you can follow to be successful. And that is what I teach when it comes to my content. You will go through this process, getting together the basics and the story are probably the ones that are going to take a lot of your time. In addition, the rewards, this is going to take a decent amount of your time. And I would say that when you are a beginner or a creator, so much of your time is spent on two different tracks. The first track is going to be the product itself, the project you're making, making sure it's high quality, what people are going to get, be getting the prototype together. If you're creating a card game or a tabletop or a physical product or an invention of some kind, you're getting the product. There's that one timeline. The second timeline is the marketing timeline, is what you're doing in terms of the Kickstarter, the copywriting, how you're structuring all of this, um, making a bang happen. So that way, when you go live, you can get instant funding, doing a pre-launch campaign, uh, you know, having a strategy for when you go live. These kinds of things are more so on the marketing side. And that's really just presenting it in a nice, beautiful box, making it look nice, making it look cool, making it look like something that people are willing to take a chance on. And in this case, boom, 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 a million dollar campaign, 18,000 backers, literally. And it's only been live for like four days here right? I'm sure that this surprises you. I think that having such a low goal, like 31,000 people are like, oh my gosh, I didn't believe you could reason you can raise that much. This is what it's worth. If you get it right, if you do it right, if you actually prepare and you study this, you can have a major win no matter what the category. I'm sure if I came to you and I said, hey, this is a graphic novel. Can you do a million dollar graphic novel campaign? Most people would look at me like I'm crazy until I show you it can work, right? So whether it's a graphic novel, physical product, technology gadget, or gizmo, become a student of the game, my friend. Commit yourself to showing up every single week, doing just a little bit, whether that's learning a bit more, taking some action, getting stuff together. Become a student of this game because the reward for winning this game is massive. Not only do you get the funding, to actually go out there and create this, but you've literally launched a brand, you've launched a business, you've pretty much changed the entire future trajectory of your life and your career for good, and you've done that in a span of 30 days. That is so cool, that's why I'm passionate, and if you like this video, come subscribe to this channel um, so you can get more videos just like this, give me a thumbs up. Again, my name is Salvador Brigman, hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you next time.